that's enough to spoil your day. And potentially your year, yeah. your life. <laughs> Personally, this is the kind of video I really enjoy watching. It's that perfect balance between education and entertainment. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <laughs> So we're now getting the beaker ready for what? What are we going to be doing with these beakers? Uh, I'm going to extract venom from the uh, cave crabbers. So now what are you doing with the beaker? Why is there plastic over the beaker? Well, it uh, stimulates um, the feel that the snake will have when it bites. So the fangs penetrate through the plastic. Getting out a cape cobra now, not a cape black mamba or cape green mamba. This is just the cape cobra, not the cape spitting cobra. Whatever they want. Hello, boy. Yeah, not a happy snake. This one's to escape. <laughs> exactly. Just had enough of this now. And working with venomous snakes, the biggest thing is patience. Yeah. Just patience, hey, Uncle Mike. And you can't hurry this. If you hurry this, you'll hurry to hospital. Yeah, no one here wants to hurry to hospital. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to bite. <laughs> <laughs> All you wanna do is bite, hey? So, here we go. There, you can see the venom flowing. There we go. So now, I'm just... What I want to do is I can just keep his fangs through the plastic and I'm just going to gently massage the venom layers to get another one or two drops from each fang. Just want to get as much venom as possible. There we go. So, this is the Cape Cobra. I'm Genevia. So, what is the average venom yield on these snakes? You need to get venom from about 10 large Cobras to get one gram of dry venom. So the venom we get now is a fluid and then we're going to dry it. And why do you dry the venom? It, it's so it maintains its properties. If you don't dry it, um, it can become rotten and then you can throw it away. So venom actually rots? No, it's a protein. Okay, so basically the proteins break down. Yeah. Let's go to the next cage. Beautiful mumbo in here. Blacktail Jameson's mamba. Blacktail Jameson's. Dendro Aspis Jamesonic Kamisu, or how do you pronounce that last bit? Kamisaya. Kamisaya. How many milligrams of venom is considered a fatal bite? For these snakes, um, I think they reckon about 15 milligrams. Potent neurotoxic venom. Yeah. Okay, so this is now a reluctant biter, so we just need to pull the bottom jaw open. There we go. See, snakes don't always want to bite. Yeah. Definitely the last resort because they're wasting their precious venom, which is pretty taxing on their body too. Well, the venom they want to use it for catching food, and they're not gonna eat us, so they don't want to waste it on us. They can just give you a little bite to scare you away. They're happy with that. So that's what we'll consider a dry bite. A lot of snakes will give you a bite and. Very little venom is released. And then people use all kinds of folk remedies. They survive the bite and then they think it's the folk remedy that made them survive. Meanwhile, the snake didn't inject venom. <laughs> Just the dry bite. Yeah. There we go. As you can see, he reverses in the tongs and then ta da! Uncle Mike has nicked him like another walk in the park for Uncle Mike. <laughs> African reptiles and venom is the park. <laughs> And there's the venom. <laughs> right, let's see what he's going to do. Oh yeah, he wants to bite. He wasn't happy with this. Nice. Look at that venom. Woo! Don't want that in me. Yeah. So, wh what does this venom get used for? And how do they make anti-venom? Right, so we extract the venom. And then we dry the venom. We collect venom for a year before we do a delivery. And the venom goes to South African vaccine producers and they'll take the dry venom way off a dry quantity of venom that they need. They mix it with sterile water to make it back into a solution like it was when we got it from the snake. Okay. They can draw it into a syringe and they inject it into a horse 
horses, the host animal, to produce the antibodies. Okay. So we, in South Africa, we use horses. Um, I know that uh, the profab is used, uh, is used with sheep. sheep. Yeah. And in United Arab Emirates, they use uh, camels. So what happens is small quantities of venom will be injected into that horse. The horse starts building antibodies and they keep on injecting more and more venom to increase the antibody titer. And it's about six months process, yeah. right? Yeah, it's about six months. Yeah, By that time, you know, if you inject the horse nicely, it will have a good antibody titer and then the horse makes a blood donation. In South Africa, we're still very primitive. The, we just let the blood remain in the flask and let it stand for 45 minutes. <laughs> And it so it separates the plasma. The, the blood cells go to the bottom in the flask and the plasma stays on top and they draw the plasma off and the, the plasma contains the antibodies. Then they remove the antibody. Um, 10 liters of uh, plasma will, will give you one liter of antibodies. Okay. Right. And then that's... Obviously a very expensive process to do that. It, it is an expensive process. Uh, I think apart from just all that work is looking after the horses. Yeah. Because horse is a large animal and you know, it eats lots. Yes, yeah. snakes also eat a lot, <laughs> <laughs> especially when you have so many. Yeah, but yeah, so we're done now with this Cape Cobra, beautiful speckled one as well. Uncle Mike's actually going to send that to my house, hey, yeah. Uncle Mike. I got high hopes. <laughs> I got high, high hopes. That's why I don't sing and I, <laughs> I do snakes because I can't sing. <laughs> But I got high hopes, not really. Uncle Mike likes keeping his snakes. I leave them for the venom production. It's no good they sit in your cage and do nothing. Well, uh, yeah, I don't have a good comeback for that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, now this one's stunning. Yeah, nice speckly snake. A nice pretty one. You can send that one to me. <laughs> drop a venom from one fang, drop a venom from the other fang. We're gonna have fun, but listen to that hiss. And Uncle Mike, why don't you just stick your hands in there? <laughs> <laughs> now use tongs. Okay, do okay. So is venom an expensive thing to produce. It is, yeah. Uh, in, in terms of, uh, we've got lots of snakes here. Um, we probably keep more than we actually need, but uh, it's better to have a little bit of fat than to have too few snakes. If something goes wrong, you can always supply the venom. If you keep just what you need and something goes wrong, then all of a sudden you've got a problem. And it's not like you can just go to a shopping center and buy snakes off the shelf there. <laughs> no, you it can't. It doesn't work like that. So you need to keep more than you actually need. Extract the venom from these snakes. And once a year I do the venom delivery and they test the venom. If they're happy with the venom, they'll tell me to invoice. Yeah, that's just the fact of the matter. I enjoy doing it. That's why I'm doing it. If, if, if it was for the money, I wouldn't be doing this. I'm just doing it because I do enjoy it. And I'm contributing to saving people's lives. Uh, if they must pay me what I actually spend to look after these snakes, th then obviously the price of the antivenom needs to go up. Yeah, and then that's not going to help people, especially in rural areas that cannot even f afford the current price of antivenom. Because yeah. yeah. it's actually a neglected tropical disease. Yeah. Now, the other thing is that the price of the antivenom itself is also subsidized by the government. What does that mean? That means we don't pay full price. So the government pays partial price for the antivenom? Yeah. Or yeah. Then why is it still so expensive? Well, they, then they must just get a bigger subsidy to make it even, even less. But they, they, okay, they so subsidize by one third. So price. basically we need to raise more money as it's a neglected tropical disease. So sure. if there's more funding, there can be more venom or anti-venom produced and therefore also lowering the cost for... To keep snakes and to extract venom is an unappreciated 
uh, type of work. Yes, I mean, it's expensive to even keep these snakes and keep them alive by feeding them. Because how many snakes have we milked? And you can see the amount of venom that we've got from them is such a tiny amount. It's like, that's probably like two grams or how many grams of dry weight venom? Yeah, probably say? two grams, yeah two grams of dry weight venom and that's probably from about we did about 20 or more snakes, yeah. cape cobras and you got to feed those every week and you can't milk them like all the time they don't just produce venom every single day that you can take a lot of venom from them so yeah. it's an expensive thing to do yeah uh, people think no why don't you just milk them once a week if you milk them once a week the snake's going to stress too much, they're going to stop eating and then they die. And then you defeat the whole object. You want to keep the snakes alive. Okay, so we have the venom here. So we're just going to remove the plastic. Can I get a shot of that nice juicy Cape Cobra venom? So you can see it's all yellow. Very yellow. And I've heard black mamba venom is a very different color, is that true? Black mamba venom looks like water. It's got no color to it. Not a very nice water, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we have here is a uh, vacuum flask. Inside is silica gel. Looks like blue salt, blue dry salt. This stuff removes moisture. Okay, for the anti venom unit, venom dried like this is fine for them. For uh, researchers, they don't want this type of venom. They don't want it uh, crystallized. They want it freeze dried. But this is a very simple process. So what we do now is we're going to remove the air from this vacuum flask. What is that machine called? This is just a uh, vacuum machine. Now when you vacuum pack meat or something like that, okay. it's a similar machine. But we just use these flasks here. We've got a little meter over here, so when that red thing has gone through that side, then it's removed the air out of there. So we collect these venom, dry them here like this for the anti-venom unit, and once a year we do a single delivery and we take all the venom and deliver it. And then we collect again for another year. How much venom do you generally deliver? About 100 grams per year. 100 grams in total or yeah. of each species? No, in total of all the species, 100 okay. grams per year. So that's how many grams per each species? It varies. Okay. Yeah. Depending on what they need. Correct, yeah. So this is now, the meter is now only by that side, so it's... <laughs> so, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and go follow Uncle Mike on all his social media pages. Links will be down below, so go check it out, website included. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to go out, learn, explore, inspire, Cheers. and live it.